I will be talking about um, Africa's um, uh, financing needs, um, the SDR allocation and its uses so far and where Africa is um, currently. I would also speak on the systemic um, issues that, um, that follow SDR allocation and where African voice and influence lies in the decision making on SDR. Um, and I would also look at what an African position should be um, regarding SDRs and then open up for more discussion. So Africa's financing needs are quite large and urgent and varied as a result of um, the issues that um, it faces. So one of the biggest issues African country faces regarding face regarding its financing need, its its high level of um, unsustainable debt, and countries who, that are you know going into debt distress. So so far, um, forty percent of African countries are running very high risk of debt distress. This is also in addition to the Russian Ukraine crisis and to um, COVID recovery from the COVID pandemic. In addition to this, there have been forecasts that, that um, Africans' growth rate is going to slow down as a result of the Russian um, um, Ukraine crisis effect that is contributing to high costs of living, um, import costs, um, global market volatilities. And um, uh, there's also very increased def um, fiscal deficit as a result of um, Africa's um, um, Af um, Africa um, issues, which is creating um, uh, increases for its um, financing need. So, so far, um, Africa's financing need for the next two years has been estimated to be over um, about four, over 400 billion. And um, its usual sources of um, financing, which which include DRM, DRM from taxes, um, private borrowing, official um, development assistance, do not look very feasible because of the policy and financing costs associated with this um, with this um, sources. So so far, Africa has has more recourse or needs more recourse to special drain rights, and that is where the fix comes in. Um, special drawing rights allocation criteria do not work for African countries because of um, the allocation, the quota-based um, system of allocation, which ensures that high-income countries receive more of these allocations than low-income countries, and so that leaves Africa in in a, in a big fix because we see from the 2021 um, SDR allocation. That's just only 5% of it went to African countries, which was about 53 billion, which is not enough to support um, economic recovery from COVID, talk less of meeting Africa's development needs. So uh, for these reasons, and because of the huge um, and urgent uh, um, financing needs of Africa, um, Africa is calling for reforms at the global level and larger as they are allocation. Please, next slide. Um, so what are SDRs? So SDRs are an international reserve currency that, um, that were created by the IMF. And so the entire the, the major purpose of SDRs is to provide liquidity to the global economy in times of financial crisis where there are li liquidity constraints. So for this purpose, um, SDRs can be used for a lot of purposes. So it can be used for um, settling um, balance of payment problems. It can be used for budget financing. It can also be used to increase um, official reserves of countries. So overall, the purpose of SDR is to help the um, IMF meet its um, mandate of um, monetary stabili uh, stabilizing the, uh, the economy or the uh, global financial system, as well as bolstering um, economic resilience in times of crisis. So um, overall, like I mentioned, the SDR um, allocation is based on um, quota shares in the IMF, which is based on countries' contribution determined by its GDP size. So GDP size is, the, of course, it's reflective of the country's um, relative economy uh, position in the global economy. So it means that um, the more income or the, high, the, the larger the GDP size of a country, the higher its SDR, um, so, and which, which creates a problem because most of these high income countries like the G20 and G7 countries don't really have need for um, the SDRs because 
Um, particularly for the G7 countries, most of them are the issuers of the reserve currencies um, on which SDR is exchanged for and valued, valued at. And um, uh, in addition to that, most of the high income countries already in times of crisis are able to engage in expansionary monetary policies that provide fiscal space and provide um, and help their citizens meet um, the issues that come from financial crisis. Unfortunately, African countries do not have that kind of privilege and it's, 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 it's a problem. So um, please, next slide. So overall, SDR um, issuance, the um, IMF has issued four, um, four general um, SDRs and one special um, SDR. Some were issued in the 70s and um, early 80s. However, post 2000, um, there has been two issuances, um, except of course for the special one. So the, the, the first post 2000 issuance of SDR came because of the um, global financial crisis of 2009, uh, eight to 2009 to inject liquidity into the, um, into the global um, um, economy. And then we have the largest SDR allocation of um, 650 billion, of which Africa just got 33 um, billion out of it, which is the size gotten from by um, France and Italy alone. That's what one continent got. So what are the what are the issues? What are the systemic issues that uh, what have been the uses of this SDR that Africa has received? Um, next slide. So um, there have been several uses of um, the SDR allocation Africa received. So several countries have used some of their um, of their SDR to meet debts, um, obligations, and related expenses. Some have used it to augment shortfalls or to finance um, budgets. For example, countries like Cabo Verde used um, its SDR to finance its 2022 and 2023. Um, budget. Some of some of the SDRs have been allocated to regional DFIs. Some other countries like Angola have used it to use their um, their SDRs to pay for import and to boost their um, their foreign reserves. Countries like Zambia have used it to um, boost their um, foreign reserves. Um, so from the SDR allocation Africa has received, it has drawn. A lot of uh, it has exchanged it and it's it's dwindled. So as at 2022, um, what is left of the SDR is about four billion. With, uh, since the African countries have used their SDR, so it means that um, there's liquidity constraints for um, for Africa in addition to poor growth rate and dwindling fiscal resources. So Africa is is between a rock and a hard place essentially. So from the um, SDR allocation, given, um, uh, from the uses of uh, Africa's SDR allocation, we see certain things, certain clear patterns here. So um, as, uh, the SDR allocation for Africa is um, reflective of the in, uh, inequalities that exist at the global system. So in other words, bigger African countries got more SDRs than um, small or low income countries. So, for example, a combination of South Africa, Nigeria, and Egypt got about 30% of the um, allocation given to Africa, and the rest were shared among um, um, African countries. And we also see that um, SDR allocations are more impactful in low-income countries of Africa than the uh, middle-income countries like Egypt and Nigeria and South Africa. So, for example, most of the um, SDR received by um, Zambia, which was used to bolster its um, um, official reserves, were um, much more meaningful and impactful to Zambia's um, official reserves than, for example, Egypt, that um, the difference was just about 6% in um, increment of its official um, reserves. So one year after, um, Africa still finds itself in a, in a bind, still suffering from high debt levels and debt distress. Um, Russia and the effect, the, the very devastating effect of and compounding effect of Russian Ukraine conflict and um, climate change. And why why is this so? Why is, why does SDR not work for Africa? It's because of certain systemic issues that foster inequality that are play. Please next slide. Um, sorry, can you go back? 
Um, so what? So s some of these systemic um, issues that are play with um, at S um, in SDR Africa's SDR allocation is number one. Africa does not have a voice where SDR allocations are being or discussions are taking place at the global level. And why does Africa not have a voice? It's because the global system has been designed to be that way, starting with the quota system that um, SDR allocation is based on, which is which is reflective of GDP size. And we all know that GDP size is reflective of trade. And Africa doesn't really contribute so much to global trade because of its lack of beneficiated um, product it trades in, which, which essentially is low value. Um, compared to um, most developed countries that trade in finished products. Um, another issue that Africa faces, it's, it's, um, it's the quota size determines um, the voting rights and voting power of countries. So, so far, because Africa's um, qu um, quota shares in the IMF is based on contribution, Africa doesn't really contribute so much to the um, IMF fund and uh, to the IMF and as a result of its high debt levels, it also um, diminishes its, its ability to have its um, quota shares increased as well. So this affo affects its voting rights, and so far Africa is not able to, you know, to 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 speak through its vote. Um, unlike the uh, unlike the U.S. that has about 16 um, percent um, quota share votes. And, and together with the EU and um, the United Kingdom can come together to form voting blocks and influence um, policies on or influence decision on SDR allocation. So this limits Africa. Africa also doesn't have um, sufficient representation in the executive board of the IMF to, to, to contribute or to make, to hold or to have very important sway over decisions. So far, um, Africa just has two seats at the IMF um, compared to countries like Germany and the gen essentially the G7 countries where most of them have a seat each. So this, this, this arrangement works against um, African countries. And we also see that African countries also do not have um, their currencies in the basket, um, the SDR basket of currencies. So in other words, countries that, have, that hold or offer um, reserve currencies have a lot of sway and they have a lot of influence. And as a result of the influence they hold and they are able to issue money, they are able to have ample fiscal space to make decisions and it also affects it's, uh, they are able to make decisions that bind Africa. So in other words, Africa's position in decision-making at for SDR allocation is practically non-existent. So what, what does this bode for Africa? Africa? Africa is a rule taker, essentially. It's not a rule maker. And so this, this leads us to what can be done. What, what should be a common African position if we want to see changes for SDR um, allocation? Please, next slide. So one, um, of course, we, 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 the, the first position is the SDR of 2021 20, um, um, was useful, but it, it's grossly insufficient. So there will be need to channel um, more of unused SDRs to African countries, with, which there has been calls for. So um, one of the, one of the um, um, means I would advocate for is using it through um, existing African institutions, instead of using it, um, channeling this through the um, RST, the Resilience and Sustainability um, Trust, uh, or creating new trust to deal with this. Um, also, there has been discussions on the reallocation of um, or redistribution of um, unused SDR to the tune of one um, hundred billion by some of by some African governments and um, the UN and some civil societies are for three three trillion. So I, I I prefer to align myself with the UN and the civil societies point that um, there should be enlarged um, um, allocation or redistribution of um, of SDRs to that amount. Um, but this um, re redistribution and rechanneling um, unused SDRs are just a part, or I will call them medium term solutions. Um, the best and the most important solution will be a reform of the SDR architecture. Um, I know <laughs> in the morning, um, 
one of the speakers talked about not using the reform language. Instead, there should be a total dismantling of the um, global system, whatever position would be taken, but there's need to discuss on how SDRs are being allocated. Perhaps one of the proposals should be expanding the criteria for, um, for SDR allocation because this quota-based system is, is not working. So um, expansion should look at um, GDP, uh, looking at development criteria for uh, allocation of SDR. There should also be um, look at there should also be a, a criteria looking at growth potential, which Africa has huge um, growth potential because of its resources, its human resources, its natural resources. Um, and there should be um, allocation um, criteria should also expand to needs-based or utility-based criteria. Um, also, there's need to um, for Africa on its own because to whom much is given, much is expected. So like a lot of the speakers and the participants have spoken to, there's need for systemic reform or the legal framework on SDR uses that ensures um, transparency and accountability because um, that's one of the issues that affect F SDR allocation or what the um, high income countries are saying that there's no accountability mechanism to see how SDRs are used. And there's also need to um, allocate um, SDRs through the, um, like I mentioned, African institutions. So some of them should be the African um, Multilateral Development Bank, which would help it to meet its um, um, function of providing loans to um, African government and meeting its development agenda. So some of these institutions can include the African Development Bank, the regional banks, um, banks like African Bank. So they will be able to, um, to channel all these SDRs to African countries because they are intimately aware of the issues that are in Africa and are able uh, are better positioned to provide technical um, assistance and institutional um, help to African countries. So um, that's the position African country finds itself. Um, next slide, please. So why does Africa, um, for the interest of time, I'll just take two. Um, why does Africa need SDR allocation increase, reform, or possibly dismantling of the system to create a better and more equitable system. First of all, um, uh, um, discussions or give, giving stronger commitments to um, SDR increase and allocation at the global level helps to put Africa at, um, at a more um, active role in its decision and in its development. So it, it takes Africa from the realm of always being a rule taker to the realm of being a, um, a rule maker or being where uh, an active participant where rules are being taken, not just when rules taken by active members and then it's forced to toe the line of um, the active members. Um, secondly, I am in. Uh, Increase or reforms around SDR allocation would help to put Africa on track again to meeting its, its SDGs and um, development agendas like uh, Agenda 2063. Um, it will also help to tackle ch climate change, relief, and give a lot of provide relief and liquidity for Africa to meet its recovery um, goals and and other development goals. So, um, in conclusion, um, I would I would leave by saying that the issue of SDR increase and um, um, allocation to meet Africa's financing need at this point in time has gone beyond an African problem. It's no longer an African problem. It's a developing world problem. It is a global problem. So it is time for um, decision makers um, and other uh, stakeholders in the global economy and financial architecture to listen carefully and pay close attention and reform the rules because extraordinary times call for extraordinary measures. And these are extraordinary times that warrant extraordinary measures. And I would close um, my presentation on using a quote from Walt Disney that says that um, progress is impossible without change. So Africa and the world cannot move beyond the crisis that COVID has caused economically and the effect of the Russian Ukraine war without looking or changing the dynamics of things in the global system. We call for policies and practices that put people first. We call for policies and practices that put people first.
Do I?